And for our next speech, let's take a deeper look at the new business service monitoring feature. Let's welcome a fellow support engineer and a trainer from Zabbix, Alexander Petrovs Gavrilovs. Hello everyone, nice to see you here all at Zabbix Summit. And today we're going to talk about getting to business or specifically to business monitoring. And let me introduce you to what awaits you in 6.0. So we're going to talk first about what is business service monitoring and why every problem can essentially be a gift since without the problems we would not be able to grow. So we know that business is, well, a lot. There are a lot of different, again, uh, business aspects we need to know about, how they are working, are they working, is everything fine and if each process actually is performing as it should. So. A lot of things to keep in mind that's why the things can get a bit convoluted and we need something that will assist us in this to again understand what's going on that's why we need to define a checklist a business service monitoring checklist so we need to define what's going to be our business what is our business what do we do what services we provide and what actually again is responsible for keeping those services alive then we need to define well our expectations of the business, we can call them again SLA or as it also is called service liability agreement or service liability objective to actually understand again what we expect from the services. Then we need to define what actually uh, reflects how the service is doing. So we need to assign suitable data which will again reflect what is going on with the services. And then we just track and measure. So how we usually do it. First, of course, we define the business itself and, well, business, again, as I said, can be a lot of different aspects. So you see right now a tree, a tree that actually pretty much precisely reflects the business. So uh, we specify what is the user, uh, again, services, what are the internal services, what do our clients or our customers use? Do they use maybe some web pages that we provide service for? Maybe they have a help desk access and we provide support for. Maybe they can call us. And again, all of those essentially simple services are also based on something. So the phones, again, are based on actual phones. So they probably have some PBX if that's internet calls or if it's a web page then of course this page is hosted somewhere and also web page requires some services like you know uh, maybe a container engine maybe a simple lamp server maybe a separate database and so on and so on so again this tree can get pretty big and if our engineers can of course again keep that on their head they know where exactly everything is based from business perspective that's a lot and that's a bit convoluted so why not define it simpler why not define it just as is? So we have a business, we have user services, we have internal services, and user services are based on this, and internal services are based on this. So as simple as you see right now. And then we define it in Zabbix, and again we define it just as simple in Zabbix. So we define that we have customers, we have some kind of internal services now, uh, we can specify which specific services do customers use and again we can also specify which services are we using to provide those services so in 6.0 that's going to be really simple and simple does not mean less precise you still can create child services for again the parent services and define what exactly they consist from what should their SLA be and you can also add some tags you know to make things a bit more clear to understand what exactly this service again reflects who does it maybe belongs to and which customer uses it and it gets even more detailed after it's configured so you will be able to see again uh, is the services performing as they should are they up when they should or are they down when they shouldn't and you will instantly see what is affecting your service but not only from business perspective but also from the technical perspective so it will be easier again to assign a task for a responsive engineer, responsive maybe manager, to actually solve this task. So let's take a look at how it is configured in 6.0. So we start, of course, by going to the monitoring services where we can define, you guessed it, services. So now, again, you don't need to, again, start with some root service. You start with whatever you want. And 
It's as simple as clicking just two buttons. You have two buttons now. One is called View, which allows you to view the services, and the Edit button, which allows you to, again, quite obvious, edit the services. Uh, just switch to Edit button, click on the Create service, and create a service. So define what is it, uh, what is the service, who will be using it, what defines it, how and when it must be up, and so on. And you don't even need to click the create service button you can actually use newly added fast editing options when you can instantly add child services you can go to editing of the service or just you know simply delete the service so let's take a look at the actual service creation screen now at first of course we define what is a service so we need to add some name like is it a one call support just as on the slide or maybe again is it a hosting service maybe it is a backup service so just name it define it so you can clearly understand what it is if it will have a parent service select which one if it is a parent service well of course ignore that field at all then define some problem tags and this is really important because now in 6.0 we use tags even more and that also affects the services so now you create a trigger you know the problem condition and you can tag it you can tag it again to better understand the problem and then you can reuse this tag on the, uh, which you create on the trigger level in the service itself and specify which problem should fire for the business for the service to be affected and then define the status calculation rule which again uh, will apply to how exactly uh, the SLA, the SLO, will be calculated. And you can go really, really specific down here. So you can specify how the service will be affected. Should the status be set to something specific to, you know, a warning, average, high, disaster, is it a disaster or not? You can specify uh, how important each service is, and you can define some quite cool, new, advanced uh, conditions. So maybe if at least some specific number of child services is affected, then only then the parent services is affected. Or if less than, or if some specific percentage, or if it's a weight. So how does that look like? Again, we just go and specify how the rule will be propagated uh, to the parent service from the child service, how the child service actually strongly affects it. We can again define maybe it should be a fixed status. And then of course the parent uh, service status will not change at all because we define it. It should be fixed no matter how severe the situation is with the child services. And then we can also define the weight, so how important each child service is. So let's take a look at a simple example. Let's say we have some kind of an HA cluster. And of course HA cluster uh, consists from a number of nodes. One, no, two, closer, probably at least three. And then we basically define that our HA cluster actually consists of three child services, which in this case are nodes, as you can see from that slide. And we specified that each node uh, weights absolutely equally, so one. And then we define additional conditions. So if one node goes down, it's a warning. Everything works, but we already need to pay attention, fix the broken node. Two nodes go down, well, situation is pretty average, I would say but still we already need to take action we need to restore at least one node or all nodes went down of course that's a disaster we need to solve it absolutely fast and this is going to be propagated to the parent services as this so we have our RG cluster right here on the slide and we see everything's okay but then we see one node went down and it became a warning and we see node in db cluster is down then second node went down and we see that's an average situation we see exactly two links they're actually leading to the triggers we will see that later on and now again uh, the third one so all nodes are down and it's a disaster and again we see it and it will automatically will be propagated to the parent service so you again will have that flexibility and you will have that real-time root cause uh, visibility from the services page but then of course we need to define the SLA so we will need to define when services should be available. So should they be available only wor in working days, maybe on weekends, maybe uh, again, any day of the week, of the month and of the year, which is actually the default option. But you can define the uptimes, the downtimes, and even again, uh, the one-time downtimes or the maintenance, I would say, for each of the services. 
Then some tags, of course. Tags are taking over Zobbix more and more for us to be more flexible again, to see what exactly is going on, what exactly is the issue, what is affected, uh, what is partially affected, what is related and so on. And services are not exclusion to this. So now you can define uh, to maybe which customer the service is related to, what type of service it is, and of course, uh, what kind of service it is. Uh, internal one for you, for uh, again, your business or for your customers. Plus the child services, since I already talked a lot about them. So now you don't actually have to, again, uh, go somewhere else, specify for each service a separate child service. You can do that from the same configuration tab, just select what child services should be added to the parent service. And even more, you can actually cross link them, meaning that child services can be children for, again, multiple parents in this case. And that's completely okay. So you won't need to recreate each time a child service for each parent service. Just cross-link them and they will be related to multiple parent services at the same time. So with that configured, we only need to track, we only need to solve the issues and again, measure our factual uh, SLA or SLO. Now, even customers can do that. So now you can define separate access for your customers. You can actually give them access to the services and specify uh, which services they will be able to see. And they can, again, uh, observe how efficiently you provide the services for them. So you can uh, allow them to see what's going on and how that affects their businesses. And again, also make them more confident in your business as a whole, because if their services are stable, that means you can provide the SLA you promised. It's actually simpler, a lot simpler to understand what is the root cause of, uh, again, the problems with the service. So now when you go to the service page and you see something is going on, you will see the root cause right there. And it will be clink, uh, and it will be a link. So you will be able just to click on it and go to the problems page instantly, see the root cause, see which device is affected, and you will be able to, I don't know, call a responsible person, say, hey, that's a crit really critical problem, can you maybe take a look at it? Again, simple, fast, and instant. And if you don't want to call anyone, Zabbix can do that for you. So now we have a separate uh, category of actions specifically for services. Uh, when somebody, again, who's responsible for a specific service will get notified the way you prefer, again, about the specific services and will be able to do something about them without you actually needing to do an action of your own, you know, uh, call, send an email. Zabbix will do that for you. That means business will be you know, working as it should because no matter what happens, uh, the people responsible will get the notification as soon as possible and they will know what's going on. You will know that they know, so everything will gonna be fixed as soon as possible. And even more is coming, you will see even more in 6.0, so there will be new SLA graphical visualizations, because again, uh, as you might heard, uh, services will support up to 100,000 services to monitor. And that's a lot, I mean, that's a lot. And again, new visualization will help you to easily sort out what's going on, do you deliver, and do you deliver as promised. Plus, you will have the SLA reports. So if you want to get a daily, a weekly, a monthly SLA report about what's going on, about do you, again, deliver for this day, for this week, and for this month, you will be able to receive them in PDF form, again, let's say uh, via email, and then maybe discuss it on the meeting with your colleagues. There will be also a new service tree and SLA reporting widgets, which will be again available from the dashboard. So getting those reports and making a quick look at them will be as easy as you need to. You will be able to import and export those services and for example, share them with your customers so they can maybe uh, use it in their own Zabbix to monitor their own services. And of course the impact analysis. So you will see which service affects other services in, again, the most way, most frequently, and you will be able to determine which uh, service, which part of business should be maybe, uh, you know, changed a bit. Maybe something should be added, something reconfigured, something new bought, and so on. So that will allow you to uh, 
properly calculate the cost of your business and what should be added to make sure your business is stable. And that's about it. So soon, soon we will see more. Again, thank you everyone for your attention and thank you for having this business with us. See you. Thank you, Alexander. This feature seems like it's having some immense improvements. And because of that, we have quite a few questions about kind of minor details, how they're going to work. Um, so first off, how will the existing services be migrated to Zavix 6.0? Will they be migrated? Will they be lost? No, of course they will be migrated. We cannot allow our customers to lose their services. So they will be provided uh, a separate way to migrate them during upgrade and to make sure that all your downtimes, working time will be also transferred to your new type of services. So essentially everything will be migrated uh, and after that you can then use the new features and improve the existing services. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, that sounds uh, great. Um, next up, previously, host maintenance did not suppress SLA calculation. Is the same true for 6.0? I would say it's close to the true, but it's actually completely different. So now the maintenance will not affect the services as it was before. So those will be two separate categories and services will have their own type of maintenance, which would be called correctly to call downtime. So now you can make a planned downtime for your services and maintenance will not affect services at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, last question consists kind of two parts. So you talked about uh, two calculation rules. One of them is fixed status and another one is ignore this service. So how are they going to work? Is Does fixed status mean that it's literally always going to have the same and the status severity or is it maybe going to change at some point and the same goes with ignore the service is it always going to be ignored does that mean that the SLA for the service is always going to be 100% I know uh, I would say you partially answered those questions already but yes that will be working exactly as you said so if the status is fixed it will not change it no matter what's going on with the child services and if it's Ignore the service? Well, of course, it just will ignore the service and you will have, again, uh, the main service just showing its status no matter what happens with child services. So it will be static. Mm -hmm. So completely static, pretty much no exceptions. That's how it's going to work. Okay. Yeah, thank you a lot. Um, really, really great improvement to services. Really enables us to do many, many new things. Um, and hopefully we'll get our hands on this in production relatively soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Artemis, for your questions.